Representative Westland, welcome back to you, sir. <laughs> Representative Westland, for what purpose do you wish to be recognized? <laughs> um, well, point of personal privilege. You, uh, you, you is there point of <laughs> personal privilege, Mr. Speaker. State uh, your point. Welcome back. Good to see you. Uh, I have one word and a few thoughts I'd like to share with us. Uh, the word is present. <laughs> And colleagues, you, you'll have no idea how of the many thousands of words I have said on this floor, I have longed to say that one word. And you'll never know, can never know, how the love and the support, the, the calls, the letters that came from this very chamber this building and from indeed around the state have given Libby and I and the children courage to deal with this time of trial. I stand before you extraordinarily grateful and a truly humbled man. As many of you know, the reason for my absence was cancer one of the worst kinds, lung cancer. And while the surgeons are confident they got it all, they cannot, with 100% assurance, know that no malignant cells remain. So I will very shortly begin an aggressive regimen of radiation, chemotherapy, and a new drug called ERISA. Let me, so you don't have to ask, be blunt, well, maybe not that blunt, denial does have its purpose. Uh, let me just say, there is the possibility I may not be able to be with us next session. But the silver lining in these very dark clouds is that I've been afforded a rare opportunity, not usually enjoyed by a sitting legislator during a time of crisis. And that is, in simplest terms, I have been able to step back from the trees far enough to be able to see Oregon's forest what Nietzsche would call the intimate acuity of distance. So let me be as blunt, I think, about Oregon's health as I have with my own. Oregon is facing its own life and death struggle. And it's not up to some surgeon, some gifted surgeon to save her. It is up to us. Oregonians are looking to us to do the job they elected us to do. They're not looking to the initiative process. They're not looking to some interim committee. They're looking to us. Because it is unacceptable to Oregonians that we have the shortest school year in the country and that we have become the brunt of national humor. It is unacceptable to Oregonians that we're closing courts, letting prisoners out of jail, and wheeling grandmothers out of nursing homes. It is unacceptable to Oregonians that we are denying life-saving medical services to our most frail and vulnerable populations. That is unacceptable to me, and I pray it is unacceptable to all of us. Colleagues, it is insane that we continue to fund these vital services with a tax structure that in good times 
produces too much revenue, and in bad, falls further and faster than any other state in the union, save one. It is disingenuous of us to bemoan Oregon's highest in the nation unemployment rate without systemically looking at the business regulations, the most onerous biz business regulations in the nation that stifle our citizens' will to achieve. We will not have finished our work here if we have not systemically looked at every delivery system for every efficiency we can possibly find in trying to more effectively deliver the services that Oregonians hold most dear. And let's be honest with ourselves. Let's be honest with ourselves and our fellow Oregonians that permanent, stable, sustainable, and fair revenue is also part of the big picture solution. I recognize colleagues very well that we all come from diverse geographic areas in this state and that as individuals we are the sum toto of the lives that led us here and I equally recognize that we come from diverse districts that many times have conflicting interests but that is the genius and the challenge of representative democracy to find the best pol public policy and to forge the consensus out of that inherent conflict. That is what Oregonians are expecting us to do. Oregonians are expecting us to solve the problems that are be facing our great state. It is up to us to do the right thing right here on this floor, right now. As you might imagine, my prayers are a little longer these days. I pray for Libby and the well-being of the children. I certainly pray for my health. And I, like many Oregonians, pray for us. Pray that we may stop being mere politicians who think only of the next election and start being statesmen who think only of the next generation. Colleagues, nothing survives but the way we live our lives. It is great to be back. Here's to the speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Here's to representative democracy. Here's to citizen legislators. Here's to us. Thank you.